What is boredom? What is boredom? Boredom is <laughs> it's like a state of, of monotony where the mind has fallen asleep and forgotten its natural state and then it's become um, addicted to change and and then as it becomes deeper wound into this addiction to change um, it, it seems to look for a an external solution uh, kind of like variety as the spice of life and the more it attempts it it, it just keeps discovering that it, it doesn't really uh, solve the, the problem. So the problem is change and and boredom is is a sense of just being kind of caught up in a judgment against uh, repetition and patterns of the world. So they just repeat over and over and over and, and the mind kind of like kind of shuts off. It's like a shut off valve. It just kind of shuts down because it feels, it's a, in one sense it's like a, a version of like a depression. Uh, boredom is just this sense of, of apathy, of just a sense of stuckness and repetition. And it's underneath that it, there's just an addiction that has to be exposed before it can pop out of that. You might say that the, the cure for boredom is spontaneity. But spontaneity is very different from impulsivity. Uh, the ego will sponsor its own version of breaking the boredom with being impulsive. And, and it just leads to more of, of a sense of frustration and guilt. Um, because it's just like there's these ego impulses to try to gratify and satisfy through stimulation, through images, and and sights and sounds and so forth, and it doesn't work. It just is part of the same game, it's part of the same system. So it, it can kind of lead back to a state of, of depression when, when it doesn't seem to work. Whereas spontaneity, true spontaneity is, is when you become highly intuitive and, and literally inspired or in the spirit and you connect with we could call it inner guidance, and that inner guidance is always for the moment. It always is bringing you into the presence, into living in the moment, not anticipating the future, not recalling the past, or regretting or lamenting the past. It just keeps you, it's like if you were surfing and you catch the big wave, it keeps you right on the edge of the wave. Mm -hmm. And to me that's why Life in tune with the spirit, in tune with the flow, is very inspirational and really is truly an adventure because it doesn't really involve any kind of escapism. You're not trying to run away from something or try to reach a goal in the future. Mm -hmm. It's like you just are flowing with what feels completely 100% intuitive in the present moment. And there's a, it's a great vitality and aliveness in that, and that's really what the cure for, for boredom is. So how would you apply that, say, if you were washing dishes or uh, digging holes eight hours a day? Yeah, we have that a lot at the monastery. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of things to work on like that. I'll repeat the question. He was saying, how do you apply that to something like monotony of doing the dishes or digging a hole or something like that? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, for me it, it came down to that central question, what is it for? In the sense that when you just freeze it down into like an activity, like doing the dishes or digging a hole, it, it has to be a, a deeper purpose underneath that is part of the flow. So that it's it's not seen as just as an activity anymore, or just a task, but it's seen in a larger context. For example, like, um, like here at Kalani, you know, why do people come from all over the world 
um, to be a volunteer here, you know, to pay, even pay to be a volunteer here or whatever, is because there's a tremendous opportunity for spiritual growth and healing. And there's a draw to that. Just to come, you know, trail around the world, to come up to an island to do dishes and dig a holes, you know, it would be like, well, what's the point of that? You know, to do that anywhere. But you might say that, that Kalani presents an experience of a, it's like a, a cauldron, a huge opportunity with lots of mirroring, lots of reflecting going on, uh, a sense of an openness to safely explore the depth of one's own spirituality, and that's the purpose behind the doing the dishes, or behind the digging the holes. We have people that come to the monastery as well from all over the world, and they're very focused on on healing, on self-realization, on opening their mind up to the experience of enlightenment. And if you sat down and you interviewed them, they would tell you one by one that's that's their whole purpose in life. You know, they they just they really have a very single focus, and so they come kind of in a sense of letting go of a lot of their past ego pursuits and ego goals and so forth, just come to practice the presence, to really practice the peace, and everyone is working at the same thing, and therefore there's not like a lot of idle chatter and talking about things and gossiping and so on and so forth, it's even the communications become more and more deeply uh, purposeful, so that there's not a wasted moment, not a wasted second. Even in terms of direct communication, you know, there's, it's so encouraged to speak and to go very directly into the communication, so there's not a sense of wasted motion of having to redo things or having multiple people working on the same thing when it's it could be done by one person. So there's much more of a focus, but the purpose behind the action is really where the, the presence can be found. And um, I know a lot of times people, they do enjoy sometimes very simple tasks because, because the focus becomes so strong that they're, they're not, we could say, multitasking with their mind. They actually enjoy something like mowing the grass or doing the dishes, because it's kind of just, they, they relax in to that presence. And it's more like the spirit is washing the dishes through them, or mowing the grass through them, or digging the dish through them. Much like an athlete feels that same thing at times when they're in the zone, or an opera singer you know, when they feel like they get themselves out of the way completely and they're sung through. So, the goal of spirituality is to be so immersed in the presence that the doer disappears. The small I, the one that seems to be the one on the timeline, just completely dissolves away and disappears. And I think many people have that experience where they just feel like there's such a presence flowing through them that they they let go of, of this um, doer that is doing something for the future, doing something for somebody else, doing something for itself. Uh, that That's the highest you can reach, is when you come into that presence and the doer disappears. So it's something we do talk about at the monastery a lot. Um, and we really encourage questions, so, you know, it's it's not like the old days of just, just do it because I told you to, to do it. It's more of, of really tuning into that shared purpose and then feeling the synergy and how easily things get done. You know, when, when everybody's working together, it's just an amazing synergy that occurs and um, and I think probably much like Kalani, there's just lots of uh, of lightness, of joy, of laughter, of song, and dance, and music, and art, and 
all different kinds of expressions have come forward. Huge amounts of collaborations, you know, like when you get a group of musicians together and they start jamming together. Well, people are jamming together on all kinds of projects, not just music. They, they really can feel the collaboration and they feel like it's just swept up in it and amazing things, amazing kind of fruits of the Spirit come through in that collaborative state of mind. And um, still there are those tasks that, that seem to be very important, uh, like you were just mentioning, like doing dishes is still important in the overall functioning and, and uh, landscaping, maintenance and so on and so forth, but it's, it's, it's like a dance. It's the only way I can describe it. Thank you. It's a joy. Yeah.